Hey, it's a beautiful day, mid-October. We are gonna put a new wetland slash bog filter on an existing pond. You can see the water quality is just not where he wants it to be. This is gonna be fun. Now I know this shape doesn't look so appealing. It doesn't look pond-like. It's actually got some right angles on it, but it'll be so much easier for Chris to dig this out with the right angles, and then we'll use our boulders to really give it that pond shape so it looks like it's just an extension of the existing pond. All right, so while the pond is draining, it's a perfect opportunity to come in and just kind of clean out our workspace. We've got some existing perennials here. I see some cone flowers in the backdrop. I see some more giant cone flowers in the <laughs> foreground. We've got some pond plants, some arrowheads, and some irises and stuff we have to move. So we'll go ahead and clean that, get that prepped, so when Chris gets in here to start digging, he can just go unobstructed. Before we drain too much water out of the pond, we always take the water, bring it over to our collapsible fish tanks. These things are so nice because they fold down, easily fit in our trailer. Each one holds about 500 gallons. So we should be able, between the two of these tanks, hold most of this water, which will really, really reduce the amount of stress that the fish go through when transferring from here to there, back to here. You don't need five guys to build a wetland filter wall. One, two, three, four, five, six. There might be seven of us here. I think there's six. <laughs> six guys to build a wetland filter, but it sure makes help, especially with all this stuff, like the tedious work. So we got everybody moving plants out of the way. Pretty soon, Chris will come over here, start digging it. A couple guys will help shape things, get things done, while the other guys focus really on cleaning this whole thing out. into it you can see we've got the skimmer box taken out the old skimmer box is sitting well there's pieces of it right oh, there man. and there <laughs> the old skimmer box is way over there so the skimmer box is out that elbow you see right there coming down in here actually fed existing jets that fed stuff over in here so we'll have to rework that as well so now we're just about ready it's good to have strong guys <laughs> just about ready for Chris to start digging here so he's gonna dig out that marked out area which went from there back to there back into here so we have roughly a six by eight foot bog filter.
you can see, things are going as busy as we possibly can. But really, I wanted you to pay attention that we really don't need more than three guys to build a bog filter. We got one guy in a machine digging, digging, digging. Two guys kind of cleaning up those shelves, directing, letting them know where to go. We got an extra guy over here, Luis, just doing the pond clean out. That's all we need. We don't need myself, the guy behind the camera. We don't need anyone else. So this works out perfect. If you were doing it by hand, three to four guys would be all you need too because you can't get more than three to four guys in a hole of that size. So I got this bit out as a one day project and I think we're gonna be pretty accurate. It's about 10, 15 and we've almost got the hole dug. We'll easily have the hole dug, lined and ready for rock and gravel by lunchtime. Then after lunchtime, just like a pond dig, then we come in and do the plumbing, putting the rock and gravel in and start making it look pretty. So I think we're out of here by three o'clock. All right, so we've got our wetland excavated. The hole is in here, we've got it flat. Now we're gonna take this, this is our centipede. The centipede, the top of this should sit flush with this. We also want it slightly pitched this way because everything that comes through here should settle out in our snorkel, which is what this little area is gonna sit in. So everything pitches back this way, goes into this. Then when I wanna clean it out, all my solids should settle out down in here. And I can put a pump in through here and pump that stuff out once a year. So step five and three quarters five dig, b five five b yeah <laughs> dig this out then we're ready for our liner and i think we're fighting a little bit of weather coming mm -hmm. ready Right. You can see we've got our snorkel in, our centipede in, aqua blocks are going over the top. So we'll go ahead and get this all set up and show you what it looks like finished. Yep. Awesome. So we always cover the top. Remember we've got the centipede, then half aqua blocks, and then the entire surface area of the aqua blocks gets covered with these four to six inch cobbles. Now over the top of that, should go to a two to three inch size gravel. So we're gonna come in over the top of this, put in our gravel, and then we usually finish it off with a smaller gravel on top. Rain's coming in about five minutes. See, that's way blacker than you know, but <laughs> trust me, it's pretty black over there. So we're gonna try to get some of the gravel in here. back at day two we got rained out yesterday mother nature did not want to cooperate to get started first thing we're going to do is pull off this seam over here uh, you can see dan and corey getting all of kind of the organic film and calcium build up and that kind of stuff back off the liner getting it nice and clean one thing that we found is very helpful is a green scotch right pad corey hold that thing up so you get these green scotch right pads you find them in the dish cleaning aisle at your local grocery store but those really help kind of scour the liner without damaging it but it's proved very effective at getting some of that film off of there getting it back down to that nice clean epdm so get it all clean stretch it out dry it off go ahead and prime it and you know the drill double-sided tape then prime the other liner attach it and then trim any excess then prime again and then put our single-sided six inch cover tape over the top of that so because of the weather hopefully it doesn't slow us down hopefully it doesn't start sprinkling on us but we're going to go ahead and try and get this done as soon as possible so that we can continue to keep bringing gravel back in over here and then start rocking in the back side of that bar Well, congratulations, the seam is done. Mm -hmm. Now you can see we've got a series of boulders up in here. What Corey is going to do is start to rock in the top perimeter of that wetland filter, disguising it from that original square hole that you can kind of see that got dug. Kind of the goal that we're trying to go for here is one, make sure that the top of these rocks are at least four inches taller than water level so that we can support the liner on the back and maintain grade with the dirt on the outside of the liner. The other thing is to 
really focus on the shape. We want this to look almost like an extension of the pond itself. In through here, that liner is about four inches below water level. What we're gonna do is we're gonna dam up a couple, like a kind of a cobble landslide in through there and we'll foam in between the cobbles. It will not be watertight, but that's going to get that top water push that we really like to see coming out of the wetland filter over into here. It'll help push that water, glide everything across the top. And then this area will just look like an extension of the pond. It'll be a shallow body of water where fish babies and stuff can go in there and congregate. So that's kind of the gist of it. We're gonna keep rocking. Luis is rinsing down the gravel so that we can start filling this thing once that gravel is all rinsed because it was very, very dirty. That way, when the bog filter starts running, we're not gonna push up a bunch of cloudy water and then murk up all the water that we just cleaned after we did the clean out in the pot. So, all right. So we are at the finish line over here. You see our wetland filter has been completely installed. We've got all the rock work in. Have a little bit of grading left to do. Some cleanup and there's some electrical that needs to be moved around, but that is our wetland filter off of the edge of the pond. So I just wanted to kind of show you what it looks like before it's all up and running and cleaned up. Hey everyone, we are back out here at the wetland filter, AKA bog filter install that we did, gosh, almost about two months ago now. So you can tell I'm dressed a little bit different than I was the last time you saw me in the video, but we wanted to kind of give it some time, let everything settle out and really illustrate what this wetland filter is doing and to really show you the flow. Now the pond is, itself has already been shut down, the main waterfall, but the wetland filter is still running and that's going to continue to run through the winter just to help with some of that circulation and also pushing debris from on top of that wetland filter. But it turned out absolutely fantastic. It's a nice little addition to the pond, gives it a little bit more of a unique shape, but everything really, really turned out nice. So here's the skimmer box that we relocated that was originally sitting back over there. We've got about four inches of water and you can see that current being pushed from that wetland filter. Now, if you remember, the hole itself was a big rectangle, but we definitely disguised that with boulder work. That liner comes back up over the top of the aqua blocks and behind the rocks. And then that snorkel centipede, which is the clean out, is located right over here underneath these cobbles. So we've got a little bit of leaf debris. We just removed the net about a week ago that caught a majority of them, but you can see that the couple months that this wetland filter has been working, the biofilm is already starting to form or is already formed on the rock and gravel that's in there. And that's all the good stuff for the ecology of the pond. So again, this is an upflow filter. The water is naturally filtered biologically as it comes up through the different layers of rock and gravel. Hi, puffs. And then it helps push all the stuff from this back little cove. As you can see, just some of that debris getting pushed across the surface. As you can see that leaf, and then it comes and goes out into the skimmer box. Now, when the waterfalls is running, you've got push from both directions, and then everything accumulates in the debris basket located in the skimmer box. And you can see it has been doing its job because of all the leaf debris that's, that's collected inside of the basket. So doing its thing, but it just turned out fantastic. The fish are going to love it. Pond itself is also going to love it. Help maintain that nice water quality and clarity the homeowner is looking for. So I hope that explains everything. Again, wetland filters, bog filters, a nice addition to really beef up your biological filtration on your water features. You can either bring them in off the edge of a pond by seaming liner and having it kind of this slow moving water as it comes through into the pond and make it look like an extension of the pond. You can start off waterfalls with it, but they're just an excellent add on to any water feature that will help beef up that filtration, especially if you're looking to have a lot of fish in a small area or have big fish. It just really, really helps. So thanks for joining in for this episode. You can see we're running out of daylight here. It's getting a little dark, but appreciate you guys. Don't forget to give us a comment. If you have any questions in, on the video, we'll be sure to get back to you and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Till next time, we'll see you later. Bye.